The January 19th, 2021 meeting of the Carlington School District Board of Directors is called to order. Uh, Director Frank, would you be willing to lead us in the pledge? Of which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the secretary please call the roll? Director Zaletsky. She may not be able to make it tonight. Mr. Simsik. Here. Director Pushkar. Here. Director O'Brien. Here. Director Mendoza. Here. Director Hanchar. Here. Director Apple. Here. Director Frank. Here. Director Shriver. Here. At the beginning of the meeting, we invite those members of the audience or members online which would like to ask the board a question about an agenda item. Is there anybody that wishes to ask a question tonight? And those joining us via Zoom this evening, you do have the option of clicking on the uh, raising your hand or ask questions at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, please click the bottom of the screen and Mr. Jones will be able to grant you access. If not, there is a time at the end of the meeting where people can ask uh, any questions on, on non-agended items. We'll move on then to our section two where we approve minutes of previous meetings. I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the following four items. Number one, the minutes of the December 8th, 2020 reorganization meeting. Number two, um, the minutes of the December 8th, 2020 voting meeting. Number three, the minutes of the December 22nd special voting meeting for general purposes. And number four, the meeting of the the minutes of the meeting of January 12th, 2021, the Finance Committee and voting meeting. So I have a motion for those four items. So moved. I so move or second. Moved and seconded, thank you. Any questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. Motion carries, thank you. Moving on to section three, I'll report that we had an executive session prior to this meeting where we discussed personnel, real estate, negotiations, and student matters. I'll now turn to Dr. Crater for the superintendent report. Thank you, Mr. Shriver. At this time, I'm actually gonna have uh, Mr. McDade uh, provide us with a, an update in regard to facilities. And recently we started a uh, project at the high school in regard to uh, some chillers and some unit events, and Mr. McDade has an update for us. All right. The old chillers were disassembled and removed. The new chillers were disassembled and the galley was placed about in the corner, and they've been uh, pretty healthy and they have been doing really well. Uh, the new chillers are going to be Unit events that were replacing high school here. They uh, all the unit events have been. Hey, Dennis, is that on? Okay. They they they're saying they can't hear you. Can they hear me now? Okay, so. I'll start over again. So both the old the, the old chillers have both been disassembled and removed from the high school. The the new chillers have been brought in and are being reassembled. Uh, today was the first day doing that. The the twelve unit vents that were replacing the ceiling unit vents are have arrived down at Legalia's plant. They're organizing them. We're making plans right now to get them lifted up and put in here. I think we're going to do this in three stages. We're gonna work on four rooms at a time, uh, shut each room down for approximately four weeks. We're gonna bring those units in through the upstairs units in through a window. We're gonna remove a window probably someday this week, bring four units in 
Well, this, the first session will be two units upstairs and two units downstairs. So we're gonna try and, and start that project on the 25th here. So Legali is gonna have two to four people working in, in the, uh, into the four rooms that we've designated. I've worked out a schedule with Mr. Lochran here at the high school to uh, displace those classrooms for the four weeks that we estimate it will take to get the units into that into the classrooms. As it progresses, it will probably will probably make better time because we'll get used to on how they get installed in the piping and everything going together. Um, so the it and at the same time they'll be working on the chiller. So the chiller should be assembled, piped in, I, I would estimate two to three weeks that they'll be in. They won't be up and running at that point in time, but they, they should be um, pretty well all together in that, in that time frame. We got a little bit of work to do on the cooling tower to retrofit that, to work with the new chillers. Um, and then the unit events will take probably, uh, we're, I'm, I'm giving it three months, 12 weeks to get that task completed. Um, I think it, it's a pretty close time frame, and then after that, another month or so for the controls of that equipment. So I'd say by the time cooling season comes into place, uh, we should be up and running um, here at the high school. I'm pretty confident that that will be accomplished no, uh, without any problems, unless we run into any problems. But right now, everything's gone pretty smooth, uh, so I don't see any any problems at all here with 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 that project. And then just give you an update on a couple other things capital wise. Uh, we, have, we have got bids for the roof here. We're looking at some couple options. I've worked with Mr. Morelli on that item going over, uh, laying out different options we have here at the high school. Uh, with the grant money that the school district will get, I'm looking at uh, windows, because that's tied in with that grant money and some small HVAC issues that weren't taken care of in 2014 at Crafton Elementary School. We have an air handler in the gymnasium that wasn't replaced and some older unit events in that building, about five of them. So I'm looking into that too. That, and that would all be covered with that grant money. And then some other work um, I'm looking at here as we go forward towards the summer and the end of the school year, masonry work at Crafton Elementary School. We've been up on that roof lately and um, there's a chimney that comes up through the middle of that building. It's, it, it's getting in pretty bad shape. It's gonna need to be uh, pointed and taken care of. And then there's some masonry work on the front of that building. The planners in front need to be taken care of. And up on the roof, there's some, you can't see it from the ground, but there's some structural stuff up there. I've had a company out here last Friday, take a look at it. They're working on some pricing for me to take care of those issues. And then I, I would recommend that we also do a complete building inspection on that masonry inspection on that building. Cause we have a lot of material that overhangs that building and it's getting, it's, 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 it's dated. So I'd like to get that all inspected and if we need to have any repairs, get that taken care of. Uh, so just to make it safe, so that none of that structure would ever uh, deteriorate and maybe fall down to the ground. Of, of the, the decorative sort of stuff. That's decorative up on, up on the top of it and stuff. Yeah. And then I'm gonna pull the sconces off of that building. I'm gonna try to restore them. Uh, not sure if I can or not, but if I can, I'm, I, I think the building would look really nice with some new sconces on that building and get that front, front of that building taking, you know, looking, looking good. Um, and then some other summer projects, some carpeting at Crafton, in the gymnasium here, a new divider in the middle of that gym, that divider that's in the gym is, is it's seen its lifetime, it's bowed. I think that would be a good addition to the gymnasium. Some fire doors at Carnegie. So just some odds and ends um, I'm looking at the gear up towards as we get, you know, unbelievably towards the end of the school year. and. Um, you know, summer into the summer. So, any questions at all? Hey, Dennis, not really a question, but I want to say that I drove by the other day and um, I really thought the electronic sign was a pretty effective kind of, you know, just telling people what's going on, like when school's going to start again, all that sort of stuff. I, I just, you know, th that's exactly what 
Yeah, I think yeah. that was very that was well money well spent. That was it does it adds so much to the front of that building. I'd love to do that here at the high school too. Yeah. For down there, we're still manually replacing right. here at the high school and at Carnegie. So as we get going, that and I think it'd be a great addition to those the other two schools. But it does make a real big difference down there. Yeah, totally. In, in, in the front, and it's easy, and it's so much easier too. You can just do it right on a laptop and send it, send the notifications out to the community. It is. It's really. Yeah. I agree with you, Joe. It, it it really is nice. It was a good job. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Hey. Thank you, Mr. McDade, uh, for that update. Uh, if we could transition to the superintendent report. Uh, as we mentioned last week, uh, that we will be returning to in-person instruction. If we get the PowerPoint up there, thank you. Um, In-person instruction will resume for all students on January 25th. Uh, that's for K through 12, and that'll be four days per week. Uh, currently, we will still use Wednesdays for students to work remotely. And what we're currently doing is exploring um, some methods to enhance those, those opportunities uh, during the Wednesday uh, time when students are working remotely. Some of the things that we're taking a look at is designed to provide extra support um, for all of our students, some who are, who are working remotely and others who are with us in a face-to-face -face environment, but it'll provide us opportunity to do some personalized learning opportunities, uh, some small group work, some progress monitoring. Uh, will also allow us to identify and close some of our learning gaps um, and then also provide some individual assessments. And those are, those are some of the things that uh, in regard to, to moving forward that we need to take a look at that we talked about before um, with being fully remote for a good portion of the school year, there have been um, issues that, that have popped up as, as far as being able to deliver that instruction outside that face-to-face -face environment. So looking creatively to, to bridge that gap um, where we've experienced some, some issues so far this year. Uh, as you know, we will continue throughout the entire school year regardless of where students are. Uh, we will continue to live stream our instruction for students uh, through the classroom. So if students are unable to physically attend school, they are able to uh, pick up the live stream uh, and, and have the in-class experience from, from their home. And then also importantly is being able to work with those students and those families uh, who cannot join us for face-to-face -face instruction for a multitude of reasons and work with those individuals through surveying and collecting additional information for how we can create a better environment uh, to remove some of the barriers that are, uh, that are noticed when we provide that in-class instruction through remote means uh, to take a look at that very closely and to try to come up with solutions to, to help all of our students access, access instruction. The next slide talks about additional staff. Last week, we, we spoke about the challenges of finding substitute teachers on tonight's agenda. Um, I'm very appreciative of the board supporting uh, the hiring of, of two long-term substitutes. And these long-term substitutes have the ability to cover for both short-term and long-term types of absences due to uh, whether it's illness, whether it's due to a COVID-related issue or a variety of, of circumstances where our teachers cannot report uh, to school, they will be able to cover uh, for those teachers in those types of situations. They'll also be able to assist with individualized instruction um, and we'll continue to, uh, as we move forward, monitor uh, our staffing needs. And as we look towards that, uh, we have additional postings for long-term substitutes out there right now uh, so that in the event we need additional staff with long-term substitutes, uh, I'll be making a recommendation to, to hire additional long-term substitutes uh, so that the continuity of education for our students remains consistent for, for all students. To give uh, everybody an update on the vaccination plan, the next slide uh, discusses the Pennsylvania vaccination plan, which has recently been modified over the past week. Uh, up to this point, more than 235,000 Pennsylvania residents have received uh, their first dose of the vaccine. And currently the state, as you know, has three different phases. Right now we are in phase 1A. In phase 1A also includes some of our school personnel and that includes school nurses, and uh, anyone who is uh, clinical personnel in the school setting includes those individuals as well. So therefore, several of our employees have been able to get their vaccine, 
uh, their first dose already. And then we also have several who are getting scheduled for this week, uh, working in cooperation with uh, local health officials and the Allegheny County Health Department. Uh, those are being offered on January 21st and January 22nd at two different locations uh, to create op options for, for our staff members. Um, so across Allegheny County, it's, it's, a, it's a heavy lift for those individuals who are going through and, and scheduling uh, the vaccines. But uh, just as, as public service type, phase 1A also includes uh, other workforce employees that are outside education and also some individual citizens. So those in, in health healthcare uh, professions, ages, those individuals who are age 65 and over also qualify to get the vaccine at this time. And those individuals who are ages 16 to 64 uh, who have underlying health conditions are also um, also available to get the vaccine. And uh, there's also uh, uh, individuals who are pregnant at this time can also get the vaccine as well. Um, so community members interested in getting a vaccine who qualify under phase 1A, I'd reach out to your healthcare professional uh, to see what type of uh, procedures you need to follow to get the, to get the vaccine. If you need additional information, uh, you can click on the link that's there that takes you to uh, the Pennsylvania Health Department website and it goes through and it identifies all the different phases of the vaccine and also lists additional information as far as locations that, uh, that the vaccine is being offered. Uh, so a, a great thanks to all of our healthcare professionals out there who are administering the vaccine and also for those who have the task of going through and scheduling and making this all work and come together to uh, very complicated task across the board to, to get the scheduling in. From what we understand, when you are administered the vaccine for every one person that gets the vaccine, it takes a, uh, a nurse or the person who's delivering uh, that shot seven minutes to process each individual person that comes through. So it is, it's, it's a long process uh, that requires some paperwork and moving through the process, but we're very thankful um, for those healthcare workers. Next slide, once again, just reviews the uh, COVID-19 in our schools. Uh, at this time, our numbers are moving in the, in the right direction. We have one active uh, case in the district that is one non-instructional staff member. We have four students that are in quarantine. Uh, three of those students will be approved to return uh, back to the schoolhouse on January 25. And then we also have four staff members uh, who are in quarantine right now. And all of them will be available for, uh, to report physically to work on January 25th. So as previously mentioned, we keep the tracker up to date. You can see the most recent tracker in the lower right-hand corner there. Um, and just looking at the, the bar graph, you can see that general trend uh, for us moving in the right direction. And we are very hopeful with the numbers in the, in the county that are starting to go down from uh, rates that reached as high as 14 to 1500 uh, a day, uh, now in the area of uh, between four and 600 cases per day uh, over the past few days. So that is, is hopeful that uh, as individuals in our community continue to take the steps necessary to mitigate the, the spread of the virus, it's very helpful for continuing to keep our, keep our schools open. Um, and just a reminder on the next slide, just discusses the steps that we are required to take through PDE and their guidance uh, when we signed off on the attestation form, uh, indicating that when we hit certain thresholds in each of our buildings, whether they are small buildings or medium-sized buildings, that we will take the proper precautions as recommended by PDE um, in regard to closing down schools for short periods of time, uh, just based on the number of cases that we have uh, in the district. So we are very much looking forward to our students coming back to in-person instruction on the 25th, um, especially now that we're moving in a direction of bringing students in for four days of instruction per week. We feel that that will uh, help significantly with the delivery of instruction. As we mentioned before, nothing replaces that face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, but as it has in the past, it requires the, uh, everybody's commitment to creating that safe environment in the schoolhouse. Uh, so we ask parents to continuously check their, their children at home, check for symptoms. If your child is feeling ill, keep them home, access the remote instruction. Uh, when students report to school, they're wearing their masks, uh, we look to maximize social distance in classrooms and in cafeterias uh, where we have a, a variety of protections in place to, to make the school safe. Um, so we look forward to, to next week and seeing our students again. Then on the final, final slide, uh, in honor of school board's commitment to our students, schools and communities, January is once again 
Distinguished as School Director Recognition Month. The nine members of uh, Carlington School Board of Directors and actually board members across the, the, the state of Pennsylvania, they are a key part of the district's administrative team, make informed decisions that shape public schools and provide pathway to success for every student. So tonight, we like to pause and thank our board directors for dedicating their time and energy to the challenging and complex responsibilities of board business, including adopting policy, voting on budgets, evaluating school safety and security issues, and reviewing hiring decisions. The impact of the pandemic has added additional challenges to school boards as they determine how to best provide for the needs of our students and their families in this new environment. What I've appreciated most about this board is their willingness to engage in finding solutions to difficult and challenging issues in a manner that is respectful and focused. At tonight's meeting, the school board will also adopt the PSBA principles for governance and leadership. This framework outlines characteristics and mindsets such as advocating, leading, governing, planning, evaluating, communicating, and acting ethically. All of these are designed to increase the board's effectiveness and ability to impact how they conduct business and make decisions while focusing on preparing our students for the ever increasing demands of a changing global society. Once again, thank you to the nine members of our school board. Tonight I have certificates that I will hand out to our school board members that are here with us tonight. And generally at this time in a, in a normal setting, we take the time for a brief little break for some refreshments. However, uh, we will be unable to, to do that, but I do have the certificates and those joining us from home, I'll make sure that, uh, that we get the certificates handed out to you as well. And with that, Mr. Shriver, that, uh, that concludes my report. Excellent, thank you. We'll move along to committee reports then. First up is Parkway West. Director Apple, any updates for us on Parkway West? Um, Parkway's back in session, um, at least hybridly, in a hybrid sort of capacity. Um, and even though Carlinton is not um, back in, in person, um, we do have students attending out there. So um, it's important, as I've said before, for current technical education to, to you know, have some hands-on uh, learning. That's, uh, that's kind of at the heart of it all. A um, couple other things going on out there. Uh, they... Uh, the Parkway West was um, awarded a, a competitive equipment grant um, matching funds in the amount of $49,700 towards the purchase of an air brake driving simulator for the diesel tech program, um, which is a big deal. I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it enables students in the, in the diesel tech program to uh, use um, understand the uh, foundations of the air braking and, and electrical and pneumatic diagnosis and, and things like that, um, which, you know, it's, it's a, it's a program that um, is, is fairly unique to Parkway and, and a new one and uh, you know, one with a lot of potential for students um, career. So I'm glad to report that that's, you know, enhancing um, what they've got out there. So, other than that, they had a uh, career exploration day on January the 8th. Um, it was virtual. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm anxious to find out how that went out or how that went off. Um, we have our next meeting first Tuesday of February. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is Pathfinder. Dr. Hanshar, any Hanshar, updates for us? Yes, Jim. Um, we um, we did not have a December meeting because of Christmas. But the last time I talked to our principal, Nick Fratto, the kids are back in. Uh, we've got um, 
a good attendance plus the teachers. There's a good attendance of teachers. And tomorrow we will have our January meeting. So I'll report on our full meeting next month. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Michelle, did Director Zletsky, was she able to make it? Kelly, are you out there? She couldn't make it, okay. Uh, we can get an update from Dr. Zalewski next time on Shazda. Um, legislative PSBA, Dr. Simsek, any updates? Yeah, a, a little bit. I mean, we've, we've started the calls for, um, for this year with the uh, PSBA um, members. Um, one of the things that we talked about was Advocacy Day. They're gonna have another virtual advoc advocacy day on March 22nd, which I do intend to participate in. I find the last one very valuable. Um, if anybody else wants to participate in that, you can just register on the mypspa.org. Um, they talked a little bit about new um, education committee member assignments, um, recommended, you know, get to know your, your elected officials, try to build a rapport. Don't forget to thank them too for the things that they do for us. So talked a little bit about that, talked a little bit about um, engaging the community in advocacy efforts, you know, trying to get the word out and help people understand you know, why different things are important to our district. And the example given was charter school reform and funding. You know, a lot of people don't know how that shakes out and how that affects the district. So I thought that was really good advice and something that we should maybe think about when we're talking about our budgets and, you know, giving information out to the public. So that, that was about it um, for the PSBA. Uh, if you want, I can just go right into the foundation, so. Um, had a meeting with the Education Foundation first week of January. We met on Tuesday. Um, Director Pushkar sat in on that too. So I was really happy you know, that she could be there. She's very, gives some really good um, advice and opinions to the group. We talked about the Maggie Scholarship. We're looking to, they're looking to bring that um, out pretty soon for the students, but they're, they're hoping to make the application process 100% digital. So working on ways to do that. Also talk some more about alumni outreach and how we can connect with alumni. Um, you know, are we giving this information to our outgoing seniors so they know about the alumni website? How can we um, connect with other social media sites? So were some ideas that were talked about. Also fundraising, Taste of Carlinton typically happens in the spring, but we're not gonna be doing it this year. So hoping that we can have the fall fundraiser, the golf fundraiser in September. So that's it. Thank you very much to all the committee reports. Um, moving on to section four, there are two items. I'll entertain a motion to prove the following. Number one, to adopt the PSBA principles for governance and leadership, outlining a commitment to lead and provide every student the opportunity to grow and achieve. And number two, to prove the memorandum of understanding between the district and the South Fayette School District to provide safe evacuation and housing of respective students and staff in the event of a crisis, disaster, or other circumstance necessitating the removal of students and staff from the various facilities operated by both parties. I have a motion for those two items. So moved. Moved, do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries, thank you. Under section five finance, we have nine items. I'll entertain a motion to approve the following. Number one, the treasurer's report for the month of November, 2020 as submitted. Number two, the treasurer's report for the month of December, 2020 as submitted. Number three, the bills for the month of December, 2020 in the amount of $417,664.81. Number four, the agreement between the district and Morelli Consulting LLC for the provision of interim business manager services as presented. Number five, the district's residential and commercial real estate tax assessment appeals program for the 2021 tax year as presented and recommended by the solicitor. Number six, the 2021-2022 Parkway West Career and Technical Center general operating <clears throat> in the amount of $7,156,298 and the joint operating budget totaling $728,707 as presented. 
The district contribution to the general operating budget is approximately $416,864.48 and its contribution to the joint operating budget totals $26,703.93. Number seven, uh, to approve the athletic fund report for the month of December, 2020, with a netting balance of $4,102.65. Number eight, the activities fund report for the month of December, 2020, with a netting balance of $83,923.31. And number nine, the payment to Christopher Jeswick for supplemental hours of work for budget preparation. So I have a motion for those nine items under finance. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you very much. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Under section six, uh, personnel, we have a total of 11 items. I'll entertain a motion to approve the following. Number one, additions to the 2020-2021 athletic supplemental list with a new coach as submitted. The stipend for this supplemental position holder is contingent upon completion of the full school year and will be prorated in the event of a shortened or canceled season due to unforeseen circumstances. Number two, the deletions to the 2021 activity supplemental list as submitted. Number three, to accept the letter of intent to retire as submitted by high school teacher, Jamie Sani, effective January 31st, 2021, and consistent with the terms of the Carlington Federation of Teachers Collective Bargaining Unit Agreement. Number four, to approve and appoint Jennifer Harger to the position of secondary English teacher effective February 1st, 2021, and consistent with the terms of the Carlington Federation of Teachers Collective Bargaining Unit Agreement. Number five, to approve the request for leave of absence for employee numbers CFT 2021-05, the request for a sabbatical for employee CFT SAB 2021-01, and CFT SAB 2021-02. Number six, to approve the resignation as submitted by paraprofessional Lindsay Papinchek, effective January 15th, 2021. Number seven, to approve and appoint Ashley Schaefer to the position of certified school nurse at Crafton Elementary School, a long-term substitute position effective January 25th, 2021, through the end of the 2020-2021 school year and consistent with the terms of the CFT Collective Bargaining Unit Agreement. Number eight, to approve and recall from furlough, Stephen Hope for the position of elementary counselor effective January 15th, 2021, and consistent with the terms of the CFT collective bargaining unit agreements. Number nine, to approve and recall from furlough the attached list of food service cafeteria workers effective January 19th, 2021, and consistent with the terms of the secretary cafeteria aides collective bargaining unit agreement. Number 10, to approve and recall from furlough the attached list of lunchroom playground workers effective January 25th, 2021 and consistent with the terms of the SCA collective bargaining unit agreement. And lastly, number 11, to approve certified teachers, Emily Brosnick and Luke Ock as long-term substitute teachers effective January 19th, 2021 through the end of the 2020-21 school year and consistent with the terms of the CFT collective bargaining unit agreement. So I have a motion for those 11 items under personnel. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? Just a quick comment on uh, Jamie Sonny's retirement. Uh, we thank her for her years of service to the Carlington School District, uh, for the work that she has done for being a role model and a, and a leader in the classroom and providing students with uh, outstanding instruction um, in literacy. And we thank her for, for her years of experience. Uh, we also wish her well in her future endeavors as she moves on. Uh, and uh, just a, a welcome back to, to Steve Hope. It, it's good to have him back on, on staff and uh, we wish him well as he, as he comes back and joins the team. Thank you, John, I agree. I'll echo both of those comments. Any other comments or questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay.
Jim, I abstain from voting on item 6.7, the certified school nurse, as Ashley Schaefer is a family member. Understood. Thank you. And Bill, do we need paperwork for that afterward? Uh, the, uh, but what is the relationship, Leanne? First cousin. You, you technically do not have to. That does not fall within the uh, gambit of the Ethics Act. However, uh, since you have abstained, it would not hurt the file. It, um, you know, it, it's sort of more than you have to do, but. Okay. Michelle, Michelle you okay. can work with. Thank you. All right. So with that one abstention, thank you. The motion carries. Under section seven, student services, there are three items. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Number one, the list of bus drivers for Monarch student transportation with all appropriate certifications and clearances as submitted. Number two, to approve the list of van drivers for WL Roenick with all appropriate certifications and clearances as submitted. And number three, to approve the list of drivers for Allegheny Coach with all appropriate certifications and clearances as submitted. So I have a motion for those three items. I so move. Moved Second. Right. Moved and seconded. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. <laughs> Opposed nay. Thank you. The motion passes. Um, section eight, old business. Does any director have any old business they would like to bring up tonight? If none, we'll go into new business. Any director of new business they'd like to discuss? Then I will turn it to Mr. Jones or Mr. McDade. Are there anyone, any uh, participants online that wish to ask a question tonight? An open forum. Uh, we do have one, it seems, uh, Jamie Harvey. Go ahead, Jamie, you are able to talk now. I am so yeah. sorry. That is not, I'm not supposed to have my hand raised. Okay. You were just waving to greet us, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sorry about that. No one else. Uh, back to the board. Any open forum questions before we close? If not, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. We are adjourned. <laughs>